What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today we're talking about my top five new features from Studio One 4.5. So before we get started, I want to issue a huge disclaimer. As always, these are my favorite new features and I chose them based on what's important to me and how I work. Because of that, your list might be a little different, but that's okay. Additionally, they are in no particular order, so just keep that in mind as we move forward. But without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, jumping into Studio One, this is a mixing session for a beat that I did a while back, and I'll be using it to showcase these new features. And my first favorite new feature is the new plugin manager. The new plugin manager is essentially a proper file management solution built into Studio One for all of your plugins that allows you to toggle them on or off depending on which ones you use. So to get there, all you have to do is go to the bottom right to where it says browse, then go to the top leftmost tab, the home tab, and finally go all the way to the bottom to where it says plugin manager. Now, once we actually click on this button, we get presented with this window with the different categories, including name, type, vendor, blacklist, and of course, the master list of all the plugins that you have in your system. Now, I have to be honest, this feature confused me a bit at first, because when I first saw this window, in my mind, I thought, okay, well, these checkboxes here are on and off switches for my plugins. So for example, I don't use audio units or rewire plugins. So I simply came in here and I thought by checking them off, I would get rid of them. And you can see they even disappear from the master list. The problem was when you go back to your mix board and I try to add a plugin, let's do one here and I open up something, you can see the audio unit is still there. The problem is that these checkboxes are not on and off switches. They are filters and it even says it up here. I just totally missed it. The real on and off switches are these little circles next to the plugins. And as you can see right now, they are lit, meaning the plugin is active. And if I click on it, it dims it, meaning the plugin is no longer available. So what I did and what I recommend everyone do if you want to get rid of certain plugins you don't use is first, when you come into this window, uncheck all of the plugin types. From here, select the ones you don't want to use. So for example, in my case, I don't use audio units or rewire. From there, you can see that they all populate on your master list. And from here, you go to the bottom and hit hide all. That will effectively get rid of all these plugins from your list. So if I go back to my mix board and try to add a plugin, as you can see, now we don't have any more audio units or rewire. It's just the ones that I left available. Now, this is really handy because as producers and engineers, we're always acquiring new tools. And this is a great way to declutter your list and allow you to get to the ones you actually use a lot quicker. The second new feature on my list is the new gain controls on the mixer. So oftentimes, whenever we're mixing, we might end up with files that are either too hot or too quiet. And in Studio One before, to fix that, you would have to either add the mix tool plugin to every channel and adjust your gain that way, or you would have to go to each individual track on the timeline and use clip gain. So this little square thing here, you would drag it down or up to adjust your gain. The problem is that the plugin can be a bit annoying to use because you still have to remember to add it to every channel. And on top of that, albeit very small, it still uses some CPU power. On the other hand, if you use the clip gain on the tracks, then you were forced to bounce back and forth between the timeline and the mixer. With the 4.5 update, we now get independent gain controls for each channel on the mixer. So now once you get everything ready to mix, you can head to the mixer and do everything from there. So to toggle that option, what you want to do is head over to the wrench on your mixer. So this here, and then go down to where it says channel components and click input controls. So as you can see, we now get a brand new row of parameters for each of our channels. And that little knob you see at the top, that is our new input gain control. So now I can play tracks and either turn down the gain or turn it up all within the channel itself. Moving on, the next feature on my list is the advanced group management. So in Studio One before, if you wanted to group tracks for whatever reason, you would essentially be linking them and controlling every parameter at once. This included volume, panning, editing, etc. The problem is that maybe sometimes you just want to group tracks, but only have the volume parameter be linked, or maybe just the panning. With the 4.5 update, we now get this a la carte feature, so we can choose what parameters we want to link whenever we group tracks. So to get to this new feature, what you want to do is first create your group as normal. So I'm going to select these two guitars because I have one on the left and one on the right. So I'm going to select them both, right click, and then hit group selected tracks. 
and I'm just gonna call these guitars. From there, right here on your mixer, you can go to the bottom left to where you see these little guys here. Uh, it's above the hamburger icon. Click on it, and now you get your group tab. Finally, go over to the group you just created and right click on it, and now you get to select what parameters you want linked. So for example, oftentimes when I'm mixing, I like to group tracks that I want to keep at the same volume level, but I also want to edit them individually on the timeline. To do that, what you would do is go ahead and just leave the volume button checked and uncheck everything else. That way, if I move the faders for those two group tracks, they move in unison, but I can always go up here and edit them individually. Alternatively, you can go in here and say, you know what, I only want to group them by editing. So now if I move the volume fader, they are not linked, but the tracks on the individual timeline, they move together now. Again, these are just some examples. You can group tracks and link them by whatever parameters they have available. Next on my list, we have the new time and edit lock features. Now this one is super, super simple, but highly effective and the name says it all. So if you go to a track on your timeline, let me pick this guitar here. I can right click it, go to event, and hit time lock and essentially it now locks it in place or in time and I can try to move this as much as I want but now I can't accidentally mess up the timing of my song. Now you can still trim the beginning and the end if you choose to but the timing again will not be messed up. Now alternatively you can go in here and instead of locking the time you can lock the edit so I can move it now but I'm not able to do anything to it in terms of editing. So I'm trying to cut it now and nothing happens. Finally, you can enable both of these. So I'm gonna go in here and enable the time lock again. And now this track is completely locked. I can't move it and I can't edit it. Now again, this is really handy because oftentimes whenever we have things set up the way that we want them to, this is a great way to make sure we don't accidentally mess things up. The last feature on my list today is completely trivial and does absolutely nothing in terms of workflow, but it's just really nice to have. And that is the new smooth and improved audio waveforms. Now in previous versions of Studio One, this is what our audio waveforms would look like. Now, there is nothing wrong with them. However, with the 4.5 update, now if you go over to Studio One, preferences, advance, and then go over to the editing tab and under event appearance, you can click on draw smooth waveforms, hit apply, and now watch what happens to the audio waveforms. Everything just kind of smooths out. Again, this is super trivial, but whenever you spend long hours staring at a program, the visual improvements are also appreciated. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and let me know what are your new favorite features from this update if you have it. And if you don't, remember that it's free, so go ahead and get it. But as always, like this video if you like to subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you guys on the next one.